Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So there was a time, and maybe some of you remember it, when 3G was everywhere but 4G was the new thing. And then of course over time 4G kind of trickled down into just about every device and it would be pretty hard today to find a Android device without 4G built into it. Of course the same thing is now happening with 5G. We're now moving away from 4G into 5G and we've had 5G now for a couple of years in the flagship end with the Snapdragon 800 series of processors. And then Qualcomm did quite a bold thing last year. We had the release of the Snapdragon 765G. So it's a 700 series processor. You find that, for example, in the OnePlus Nord and a couple of the latest phones from Google Pixel phones. But of course, we're still waiting for it to hit the mainstream. And that's what we're gonna talk about today because Qualcomm have released a new chip, a new processor with 5G capabilities in the Snapdragon 400 series. It's the Snapdragon 480. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So before we get cracking, I just wanna say thank you to Qualcomm for sponsoring this video and for getting me the technical details of the Snapdragon 480. So why is the Snapdragon 480 so important? Well, why we love to talk about the flagship stuff, the latest and the greatest that you can get from Samsung or Sony or OnePlus or whoever is your favorite smartphone manufacturer, of course, large numbers of people, millions of people don't buy flagship devices. And that means that they're not necessarily getting access to that 5G connectivity. Well, Qualcomm have said that's not right. If you want a 5G revolution, if we want 5G to become the same as 4G available across every different price point, then there needs to be a processor, a chipset that also has 5G connectivity, and that is what is the Snapdragon 480. Of course, you might ask, why do you need 5G across all these different price points, across all these different chips? Why do you need 5G in the 400 series? Well, there are three main reasons. The first one, of course, is higher download speeds, and that, of course, touches everything that we do on our mobile, whether it's downloading streaming video, streaming games, whether it's downloading uh, app updates, whether it's uploading photos to the cloud, everything we do is impacted by the speed of that connection. The second thing, of course, is latency. Now, latency is about how long it takes from the handset to the network. And when you're sending small bits of data, for example, when you're playing an online game, you know, uh, Fortnite or whatever it is that you're playing, when you want little bits of information to come about the other characters, their positions, attacking where they are, what direction they're facing. That's much, much smaller bits of data compared to, let's say, a movie, but you want them to come quickly so that you can have a more of a real-time uh, experience. And 5G is designed in the way the radio waves are split up. We won't get into it now, but it's designed so that latency is very short, and that's a good thing for online gaming. And then there are the third reason, of course, is that you've got greater capacity because you can use a whole different range of frequencies. There's more reliability and greater availability. So all of those things combined together make 5G a great step forward. So let's start by having a look at a few of the specifications of the 480. And I think you're gonna be surprised, just like I was when I actually read the list of things that are included in this chipset. So let's start with the 5G stuff. It's got an integrated X51 5G modem, which means it supports millimeter wave and sub six gigahertz. It's got dynamic spectrum sharing. It's a global 5G modem, and it will work up to 2.5 gigabits a second of download speed. But what about the rest of it? Well, let's start with the manufacturing process. It's an eight nanometer process. So that's a fairly advanced, not as advanced as we're getting in the bleeding edge stuff, but still a very, very good process node. And we've got the Cryo 460 CPU in it. That's two Cortex A76 cores clocked at two gigahertz, six Cortex A55 cores. It's 100% faster than the Snapdragon 460. And actually what we're seeing therefore is tech, CPU tech from the higher series trickling down into the 400 series. For example, the Cryo 460 CPU is actually the same CPU setup found in the Snapdragon 675. So we're seeing this trickle down effect of technology into the 400 series. And the good news continues when we get to the GPU. Here we have the Adreno 619, which is 100% faster than the Snapdragon 460. That's the previous generation of processor in the 400 
500 series. And again, this trickle down effect, we're seeing the uh, same kind of GPU that you find in the 600 series coming and making its way into the 400 series. And then the great thing is here, you've got support for all the standard uh, video codecs, H.264, H.265. And a really important thing is you've got support for 120 hertz displays in greater than full HD resolution. So that's pretty impressive when you come to the CPU, the GPU, and of course the 5G connectivity. But the good news doesn't stop here. This device also has a triple ISP, something we've just seen in the latest Qualcomm flagship device, which means you can support up to three 13 mega pixel sensors at the same time. So you can take a photo with both an ultra wide, a wide and a telephoto lens all at the same time. You've got full HD at 60 frames per second, but more than that, you've actually got dual full HD video recording at 30 frames a second. And we've now got support for HEIF. On top of that is Wi-Fi 6 ready. We've got Bluetooth 5.1 and we've got Quick Charge 4 Plus. And that's the first time we'll find that level of quick charge in the 400 system. Now, in case some of those numbers kind of just flew over your head there, let me break this down for you a little bit. You've got 5G connectivity. You've got a CPU setup that is 100% faster than the previous generation. You've got a CPU setup that's actually very similar to what you'll find in the 600 and 700 series. And in fact, will beat some of the CPU setups in the 600 series. You've got a GPU, again, that is the kind of thing you find in the 600 and 700 series. And it's 100% faster than what you got in the Snapdragon 460. Plus, you've got that great triple ISP, which will do great things for the camera stuff, including or the ability to take three photos simultaneously using three different lenses. Then you've got all the other stuff like the Wi-Fi 6 Ready, Bluetooth 5.1, Quick Charge 4 Plus. I mean, this thing is packed full of features. Um, I hope Qualcomm don't get upset about this. This doesn't look like a 400 chip. This looks much more like a chip that you'll find higher up, but yet they're bringing it into the 400 range. So bringing performance and the camera stuff and 5G into the mainstream. Now, of course, clearly there are differences between the different tiers of Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. However, 5G is no longer one of them. We've got 5G in the 800 series. We've got 5G in the 700 series. We've got 5G now in the 400 series. And not only that, by really raising up that baseline in terms of performance, in terms of the GPU, in terms of the camera capabilities, then Qualcomm are offering people greater choice. And this is the key thing. Now there is a greater choice for you to still get a 5G device to still enjoy up to 2.5 gigabits a second download, of course, assuming that your carrier is able to provide that, and yet you don't have to buy a flagship device. You don't even need to buy a premium device. Now it will trickle its way down into the mainstream devices, which means you as a consumer, me as a consumer, we get choice. And I've talked about this so many times, choice is the key thing. It is the power that the consumer has to choose where they spend their money on what they spend their money on. And Qualcomm are giving me and you more choice. So what are the key takeaways for the Snapdragon 480? 100% CPU increase in performance, 100% GPU increase in performance, 70% AI increase in performance, and we're looking at 5G. And then on top of that, you've got Wi-Fi 6 ready, Bluetooth 5.1, 120 hertz display support for full HD+. Plus. You've got that triple ISP with dual uh, full HD video capture, triple uh, video capture at 720p. And then on top of all of that, of course, you've got the latest quick charge technology. Now, one final thing to say as I close, and that is until now, I've never tested a Snapdragon 400 processor on Speed Test G because frankly, it wasn't worth it. However, with the Snapdragon 480, I am really looking forward to getting hold of a device with that processor in it because for the first time, we've got real performance, real CPU performance, real GPU performance, real camera performance ready in a 400 series that means that 400 series is no longer a second rate citizen, it's 5G, it's performance, and there's more choice for the consumer. 
Okay, so my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoy this look at the Snapdragon 480. Personally, I am quite keen to get hold of a device with that chipset in it to see what it is capable of doing. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of video, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.